Um, so welcome to our talk, uh, Shaping the Future of Developer Experience. Uh, let's go do some introductions. Um, so I'm Ben, uh, I'm a maintainer on Backstage.io. Um, I've been working at Spotify for about close to four years now. Um, working on Backstage since it's been open source really, so kind of two years now. Francesco? Francesco from Italy, you see the gesture. <laughs> and uh, yeah, mm, Spotify employee, but fully dedicated on, on backstage product manager. Cool. All right, so let's get started. So what the heck, or what is backstage anyway? What on earth is backstage? So backstage is an open platform uh, for building developer, uh, for building developer platforms, so portals even. Sorry, let me stop. <laughs> so what do we mean by this? <laughs> well, it's open source, so that means it's free. Um, it's a platform which is like a framework or collection of libraries, and it's there to help you build your own developer portal in your organization or company. So just a quick show of hands before we get started. Who's heard of Backstage before? We're in Ooh. the right room, that's good, okay. Anyone using it in production? Okay, so quite Amazing. Well. that's good, wow. All right, so to de uh, developing in today's world can be complex and challenging because there's just so much going on now that you couldn't do 10 years ago. There's new languages, new technologies, new open source and SaaS solutions, and every company is different, right? And every company uses different technologies. So this kind of leads to fragmentation. And it's this fragmentation that's slowing engineers down. So having to navigate through different tools, different things that your organization might have, and knowing how to get the information that you as a developer needs, needs to know. And this is what Backstage is all about. So being able to build a platform to boost product, developer productivity in your organization. So developer platforms like Backstage are going to help you increase the speed that engineers work at by providing them tools to work autonomously and get the information that they need to get at a click of a button. It's a single pane of glass that can help you roll out standards throughout your organization, which helps to remove some of those fragmented barriers. And by centralizing these services and standardizing the tooling, Backstage can streamline your development environment from end to end, which we'll come on to in just a second. And finally, in order for a development platform to be successful, it needs to have a good ecosystem. So Backstage at its core is very simple, but allows customization through plugins. And it's these plugins that you can build inside your own organization to show your own data and build these workflows and tools to suit your company. It's this living thing. This is not something that should just be like one fire and forget solution. Backstage is going to evolve over time and bring in new information to developers. So in Spotify, we have a team of probably like six, seven people, which actually like ship backstage. So they're the people that's in charge of backstage. Then we delegate building inner source plugins to teams inside Spotify to surface this information that they're in charge of, if you know what I mean. So if we have like a build team and they're in charge of surfacing a build view because they know what information developers want to see. So we leave them to do that. So I've got a little bit of stats here. Let me just find it. So it's, we have uh, nearly 200 plugins inside Spotify. Uh, that are built by around 100, 100 teams, maybe, and they power thousands of developers in the organization. So Backstage is open source, and with that comes a lot of great contributions. So the community is huge and thriving in Backstage. So from its launch in March 2020, we've had nearly 100 plugins being contributed to the, plug uh, con contributed to the project that allow you to get integrated with your third-party services and tools without having the hassle of building these integrations yourself. So things like Jenkins, GitHub, PagerDuty, the list goes on. These can all be integrated in, back, in your backstage organization and to reduce the developer headache. Your, you or your organizations don't need to create these inner source plugins to get started and start getting the benefit of backstage. You can just use this marketplace. So you can also use the plugins that ship out of the box with backstage. And it's some of those that I'd like to show you today. So I'm going to give you a little heads up. I tried this demo earlier and it didn't work, but we're going to go with it anyway. And let's just pray to the demo goes it works. So let's talk about the centralization of technology assets. So as your company and your organization or business grows, so does the amount of services and components that run inside your organization. So like you might have to start off with a monolith and then this might become microservices and then suddenly you've got a lot of stuff to manage inside your organization. So this is where the software catalog comes in. So the software catalog is responsible for uh, indexing your entire organization's technology assets. So we wanted to provide a way to index all these for you, keep all the metadata that lives with these components alongside the code, 
and to keep this up to date so that every team can manage the services, uh, services they own and the related resources, so like deployments, data pipelines, pull requests, whatever. So Backstage makes it easy for one team to manage 10 services, and it also makes it possible for your entire company to manage thousands of them. So let's just give you a quick demo of the software catalog. Uh, I'm going to try this. If this is going to work. Let's uh, hold on one second. Uh -huh. It's going to work. Oh my God! Don't look at my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> Pain. Uh, where the hell is it gone? There we go. Let's go with this one. All right. Let's create a new tab on here. Thank you, Google. And then I need to oh, show this in full screen. All right, so we've got our little uh, demo here. So I'm going to, before I carry on, so we have a booth in the Project Pavilion, and we're running a little bit more on an advanced demo than this. So please come by and see us, and we can take you through in a little bit more detail. So I'm just going to go to the catalog first. Um, yes, it's working. OK, that's good. So this is basically the view that you would get for the catalog. So we can see here, these are uh, some of my own services or components inside uh, this demo organization. It's called Rocket. Um, we can see here, these are the four things I own. We can see everything in the company. Lots of things here. Uh, all things I star, for instance. Uh, I can click into one of these things that I own and get a little bit more information about it. So this is called the entity page. So this is super customizable. You can put in your own plugins in here and show the information that you need around this, com this component or this service. So we can see we've got some CI CD stuff here, which is just going to hook up to GitHub Actions, for instance, for this demo and show the stuff that's running. Um, and then we've got more tabs across the top here, pull requests. And that kind of stuff. Um, let's go and head back to this. So software creation. So standards in any organization are the key to scale. So we as Spotify want to make it easy for engineers to get set up and get uh, basically reduce the barrier to building new components inside your organization. So if we, you know, we say we want to ship Java, uh, a Java application, Java services, we want to be able to make it super easy for you to bootstrap that Java program, that Java backend service or whatever, with login, mo um, monitoring, metrics, all that stuff baked into one place. So this is why we made software templates. So software templates allow you to uh, create these bare boilerplate kind of repositories or anything really and get it set up really quickly so that an engineer just fills out a little form and then we go off and create all this in the back. The back. Let me quickly demo this. So this is the thing that didn't work, so let's give this a go. So I'm going to go to create here and I'm just going to pick one of these templates. So these are the templates that, uh, that you that you might have in your organization. They can be super extensible, so you can uh, create custom UI form fields to collect more data from the engineer, or you can create custom actions in the back end, which is going to allow you to integrate with any of your services or any of your, like, whatever providers that you might have to do custom things, custom actions. So let's click on one of these and create this. So I'm just going to fill out a random name here. Uh, random, and description is going to be hello, cute. Oh. Hello, Qcon. And then we pick an owner, and we click on next. And then this is going to be this, I think. And then we just pick a random repository. So this is basically just filling out where we want to, uh, where we want to save the repository, where we want to create the component. And the demo is going to be, let's do Qcon demo one, two, three, because that's probably never taken. Let's try that one. And we click on create. So this is going to go ahead and run uh, our template. So it starts off by pulling down some skeleton files, doing some templating in there, putting in the values that the engineer just typed out. Then we go and create the repository in GitHub, and it looks like it's working, and it did, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is going to go and push all that templated code to GitHub for you. Uh, I can go and click on like the repository here, and it's going to show us the re repo. If the internet is friendly, and it's not, I've not signed in. No. <laughs> anyway, there's a repo there. <laughs> Um, and then it's going to register it in the previously spoke about software catalog for us. So if I now go back to the catalog, which I was just mentioning, do I have the thing that I just created? Yay, random, here it is. So I click on this, and here we are, the random component I've just created. And is there a build? That could be interesting. No. 
Okay, uh, but yeah, it, this is basically going to create us everything that we need to do in our organization. Super flexible, super easy to get started with. And the last bit, so onboarding. So onboarding is hard, right? especially when you're a growing company. And it's also something that you really need to make right and make engineers getting up to speed really quickly. So we found in, in Spotify that it's, there was a lot of effort being, uh, there's a lot of effort from engineers to get up and running inside a company. And documentation is key for this. So we made uh, the TechDocs plugin, or docs like code, which is trying to help with this. So we basically want to store documentation alongside components and alongside the repository and code of that service. So it's written in Markdown, uh, and we've written a plugin that will convert all this Markdown into beautiful HTML that you can see inside Backstage. So we use this for quite a lot of things, not just documenting components and services themselves, but also like creating things that we call golden paths, which is basically kind of like a getting started with web development or backend development inside Spotify. So it's all of our standards and how we do things like logging and things like that, all baked into documentation. So I'd like to just quickly show you the documentation that we've got. So I'm just gonna go back to this uh, demo here. So if I go to one of our components, let's go to like the music app, uh, and then I click on documentation, it doesn't have documentation, that was a bad choice. Uh, <laughs> launch app. Launch app, there we go. And click on docs. So we're going to see all the documentation for the launch app, launch app that is uh, deployed or inside the repository of where this is stored. So this is just some demo documentation as you can see here. But yeah, we got a nice, some documentation. Um, going back to like the golden path stuff that I was talking about and how we do this at Spotify. So this is kind of an example here. We click on our documentation here and we see more of a, a rich guide and rich kind of uh, documentation for engineers to get started with. So we have steps, for instance, here. Nice little panels on the side. So with this also, you can also extend this too. So you'll see that we can add widgets and customizations to this to extend the, the, extend the uh, behavior of the TechDocs plugin. Uh, and also, if I just like, you know, click on this edit button here, I can see this, it's gonna take me to the GitHub repo, where I can actually, no, this is not also not working. Anyway, imagine there's a readme document there that I can also edit to. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the demo that I've got so far. I'm gonna hand over to Francesco now, and he's gonna carry on. Thank you, Ben. So, uh, okay. So, this is, uh, we did an exercise recently, it's a new thing, uh, about estimating how many developers are impacted with all of this. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but Backstage is having a great moment. We are super happy, super energized. We will see more data after. We estimated how many of the developers are using Backstage, or I mean, of course, it's an estimation of how many developers we are impacting. And the number is huge. It's huge. We are super happy, super excited about that. So the next question that I would like to discuss with you, uh, talking about more than four 140 companies, some of them are here, I'm very proud of this, but we are aware about, we are aware because it's an open source and free project that you can download for free by GitHub, from GitHub. We are aware, the early this morning there were 446 that we are aware of, uh, with more than 240 in the pipeline, considering to adopt it. And uh, during a weekly office hour that we prepare uh, and we offer to the one who are interested to know more about Backstage, uh, we had in the past few five months more than 200 of companies joining. It's amazing. It's incredible the, the moment that we, are, that we are experiencing. So what I would like to discuss with you is beyond what Ben was showing, so beyond what Backstage is doing, is already providing as benefit to the company. What this more than 446 companies are doing with Backstage, it is incredible. I, I, I often talk with uh, many of you and many of the adopters, incredible how things, how these uh, uh, new things are happening beyond what we were expecting, beyond what we were uh, 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 thinking. What I would like to discuss with you is uh, what is the evolution of the developer uh, experience uh, through Backstage, but not done by us in isolation, but done by the community. The community of more than 446 uh, companies adopting. 
uh, let's be inspired by them. And uh, just a disclaimer, because we have uh, adoptants in the room, uh, if you don't see your name quoted here, I apologize, but it doesn't mean that you don't innovate. It's simply that I didn't have time to collect all the, all the, all the things. Let's go through all of them. First of all, I would like to share something about the repository that Ben was showing, and most in particular about uh, the software catalog. So the central repository, you have all the technology assets, the software entity that your company is using. This is SDASC, it's an important com consultancy company, and uh, what they tell and what they see is that the catalog can address also the problem of the sparse organization composed by many companies, and the companies X doesn't, don't know what the company Z is doing, and they don't know about the software, the entities they are managing. It's amazing also this, this use case. Uh, another important topic is the technical documentation. Ben highlighted this very well. Uh, we worked with, uh, I mean, one of the uh, idea behind the technical documentation is to treat the documentation as code. This is what making the developer closer to the technical documentation. This is what reduced the friction, what helped the developers to have better documentation. And uh, we, were, we are working with Stack Overflow to provide a closer experience of, from the technical documentation to the problem and the issue that the developers are, are, are doing. It's a huge help. It's something that we didn't imagine at the time. Uh, this is Telus. Probably Telus is also in the room. Uh, great job, guys. Uh, they did uh, an amazing experience because, I mean, we want to help the developers in having better documentation. But they also integrated with uh, third-party services uh, to help also the non-technical people to write good documentation through Backstage. It's amazing. It's something that we didn't imagine. Uh, they integrated uh, Contentful, that is a API-driven uh, uh, CMS, uh, uh, to work with Backstage. If you want to know more, they, they, know the guy, they are the guys. Uh, about creating software components, uh, it's amazing what happened. This is American Airlines. What they are doing, uh, they are offering the opportunity to create Python services, APIs, but not only this, also applications, business entities, with one click in the way that Ben was showing. It's fantastic. Uh, this is Box. Box uh, uh, added uh, something that is uh, more human-centric. So, of course, uh, creating a, a, a software component can be something that you can completely automize, uh, make it automatic through the tool that we, we were showing and that Backstage is implementing and offering. But there's also some human interaction, maybe an approval, maybe in certain conditions you have to do something in some area of the company. They integrated a complete workflow with the scaffolder. How easy is this to create software in a self-service way with a human-centric approach instead of a technological complexity that remains valid, but of course, uh, we want to make it easier. Reuse of components. These are massive uh, uh, things that is happening in the market. This is American Airlines again, where they created a plugin, so a service as part of Backstage, where all the developers, before starting to implement an API, a software entity, they can go to this marketplace to understand if something already exists in the company. It's fantastic. You avoid the problem from the beginning. Similar uh, solution from Deutsche Bank. Uh, they use this taxonomy added to the software entities. And so they have, again, this sort of marketplace where you search for, I don't know, something related to the customer satisfaction. And you have API software entity. And maybe you as a developer can use something that is already existing in your organization instead of reinventing the wheel all the time. Jobs to be done. Guys, we are developer. And uh, the morning when we switch on our computer, the first thing is, oh, okay, I need to see what I have to do. This is Zalando. They call uh, our, their instance of Backstage Sunrise. And they have a home page where there is the full list of full requests or things that they have to do during the day. Backstage is helping them in their job, not only because it is making it easier, but also because it's helping them in the task to do. This is SoundCloud, it's a competitor of Spotify, but we don't care, we help them and we want to work with them with the same solution. 
And they did an amazing contribution to, to Backstage because they implemented uh, the announcement box. So every developer, every day, the first time that they, they turn on the Backstage, they have uh, a notification to say, hey guys, be aware that since the last time you were here happened this, 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 and this. We are helping the developers to do back to their job. Uh, then it's a, this, is, this is one of my favorite ones. I mean, we want to help the developer be better. And we want to help the developer improve the quality of the things that, that they are doing. Uh, this is again SDACA, but we have many examples, Splunk already, uh, also something to quote. Uh, they uh, create this gamification approach where every developer can receive this label uh, if in case of improving the quality. And uh, for me, this is really a game changer because it's not only about helping the developer, but it's taking literally the developer experience to the next level. The tool is helping the developers and the organization to have better quality software. We highlight through this system, we can highlight through this system, how to be better, how to produce better software. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, these are a list of other clusters of ideas that I have seen uh, in our hundreds of adopters. Every adopter is rebranding backstage. Uh, can you please raise your hand, the adopters that are not rebranding backstage? One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Uh, a couple of there. So, uh, measuring engineering productivity. I'm pretty sure most of you is interested, especially on the management side, is interested on this topic. If you have a single portal where everything happened, how easy is this? It is, I'm not saying it's easy, it's easier, because now it's pretty complex. We are in a world where everything wants to become a, wants to be a platform. The platformization topic uh, is a huge topic. Instead of thinking about siloed software, we want to think about platforms communicating with each other. This is exactly that Backstage can help with, uh, with the single repository and the, chart, the relation charts. Uh, uh, thinking about business process beyond what is of our software component, something that is a more abstraction uh, on top of the software entities. And uh, another interesting use case, uh, I very frequently receive question about uh, if the internal developer portal, is what you have seen here, is something that we can apply also for customers partners, external ecosystem of developers. Imagine that you are a company, probably you are a company, that is offering services outside. Can we offer backstage outside of the organization instead of inside? It is an option. Of course, providing transparency and probably more, and probably more. Uh, let me quote, I don't know if uh, there are the VMware folks here in the room, uh, hello. So uh, we are doing an amazing job as part of the community because beyond what we were expecting, Backstage is used also in uh, stacks and solutions. Backstage is a platform sitting on top of the existing services, uh, not implementing any of the service, but making easier the consumption of the services. What we are experiencing at major companies, you know, where is one of them, but we have many other collaborations and collaborations that are becoming a thing right now, are interested to put Backstage on top of the solution simply because it makes easier the usage of the technology. And it's very nice. So let me ramp up a little bit because I took only a few of them. We can stay here for hours and I would love to do this. So we created Backstage to make the developers happy. And uh, I mean, if you remember the 1.2 millions of developers that we are potentially impacted, we are super proud and super excited about that because it is continuing to grow a lot. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but the, the project is on GitHub. We have more than, uh, so early this morning, it was, it was 18,900 stars. We are getting to the 1,900, 19,000 stars. We are the fourth project uh, in, as part of the CNCF, CNCF ecosystem in terms of uh, contributor, more than 800. It's a very open uh, project, uh, more than 7,500 uh, members in Discord, free, open, join us. Uh, um, hundreds of people at every hour of the day and, and the night, and uh, we are super happy about that. 
honestly, what we are experiencing is something that is going beyond making the developer happy that it, it is happening, and we are very, we want to continue on that path. Uh, is about uh, hearing and work with the adopters to shape the future of the developer experience. And this is, this is something that we are going all together, not only us as Spotify, but all together in an open source and an open manner. Because uh, as you know, open source is the right way to approach all of this and to grow together. Backstage, it's amazing because it's, uh, it's already allowing hundreds of big organizations, and structured organizations to do all of this. Uh, and honestly, we are experienced that the future of the developer experience is happening now, all together, that it's amazing. Join us. We will be happy to have you. Thank you very much.